Hi guys, this is Austin Dennis back with another video. I'm going to be going through the pre-security learning path and we are looking at the what is networking room today on TryHackMe. So for the very first thing, we're going to look at the definition of networking and looking at basically what it is. So networks are simply things connected. For example, your friendship circle. You are all connected because of similar interests, hobbies, skills, and sorts. Networks can be found in all walks of life. For example, a city's public transportation system, infrastructure such as the national power grid for electricity, meeting and greeting your neighbors, postal systems for sending letters and parcels, but more specifically in computing, networking is the same idea, just dispersed to the technological devices. Take your phone as an example. The reason that you have it to access things. We will cover how these devices communicate with each other and the rules that follow. In computing, a network can be formed anywhere from two devices to billions. These devices include everything from your laptop and phone to security cameras, traffic lights, even farming. Networks are integrated into our everyday life, be it gathering data for weather, delivering electricity to homes, or even determining who has the right of way at a road. Because networks are so embedded in the modern day, networking is an essential concept to grasp cybersecurity. Take the diagram below. Alice, Bob, and Jim formed their network. We'll come to this a later in a later bit. Networks come in all shapes and sizes, which is something that we will also come on to discuss throughout this module. So a key term for devices that are connected together, very simply, is a network. And on to the next one. So now we're going to talk about what the internet is, which is often something that is a very mind-boggling concept to people and it definitely can get mind-boggling but if you just break it down into smaller parts and understand how each individual thing is working you're going to understand a lot better how it works and not be as blown away by it so now that we've learned what a network is and how one is defined in computing let's explore the internet the internet is one giant network that consists of many many small networks within itself Using our example from the previous task, let's now imagine that Alice made some new friends named Zane and Toby that she wants to introduce to Bob and Jim. The problem is that Alice is the only person who speaks the same language as Zane and Toby, so Alice will have to be the messenger. Because Alice can speak both languages, they can communicate to one another through Alice, forming a new network. The first iteration of the internet was the ARPANET project in the late 1960s. This project was founded by the United States Defense Department and was the first documented network in action. However, it wasn't until 1989 when the internet, as we know it, was invented by Tim Berners-Lee by the creation of the World Wide Web. It wasn't until this point that the internet wasn't used as a repository for storing and sharing information like it is today. Let's relate Alice's network of friends to computing devices. The internet looks much larger a version of this short diagram. So basically right here you've got the first network, you've got another network over here, and you have this network. These are all individual things that have routers in them and switches and everything and these can range from home networks, this looks more like an office set up with a server, this might be a small office, and all of these are able to connect with one another because they have the ability to connect through the internet through all kinds of other routers and different networks and hopping back and forth between the two. So as previously stated, the internet is made of many small networks all joined together. These small networks are called private networks where networks connecting these small networks are called public networks or the internet. So to recap, a network can be one of two types, a private network or a public network. Devices will use a set of labels to identify themselves on a network, which we will come to in the task below. So who invented the World Wide Web? Now we read about that guy just a second ago, and that is Tim Berners-Lee invented that, and if you don't know the year, it was 1989. So now when it comes to identifying devices on a network, that's going to be the next thing that we talk about. So to communicate and maintain order, devices must both be identifying and identifiable on a network. What use is it if you don't know whom you're talking to at the end of the day? Devices on a network are very similar to humans in the fact that we have two ways of being identified, our name and our fingerprints. Now we can change our name through deed pool, but we can't. However, change our fingerprints. Every human has an individual set of fingerprints, which means that even if they change their name, there's still an identity behind it. Devices have the same thing. 
two means of identification with one being permeable. These are an IP address, a MAC address. Think of this as being similar to a serial number. Briefly, an IP address or internet protocol address can be used as a way of identifying a host on a network for a period of time where that IP address can then be associated with another device without the IP address changing at first. And here's an example of an IP address. This is a very common private IP address that you'll see in your home network. If you were to look at the computer you're using right now, you very likely would have an address similar to at least the first two digits here, possibly the third. So it comes in four octets. You've got the first octet, the second octet, the third octet, and the fourth octet. This is an IPv4 address, which you'll learn more about the different types of IP addresses later, but they all range from zero to 255 in each of the categories. And like I said earlier, this is one that you're gonna see very commonly used in a home device setting. And very likely the router that you're using is supplying you with an address that looks at least like 192.168. And then anything after that can be there from that point forward. So IP addresses follow a set of standards known as protocols. These protocols are the backbone of networking and force many devices to communicate in the same language, which is something that will come up on to another time. However, we should recall that devices can both be a private network and a public network, depending on where they will determine what type of IP address they have, a public or private IP address. A public address is used to identify the device on the network, whereas a private address is used to identify a device amongst other devices. Take the table and screenshot below as an example. Here we have two devices on a private network. So right here, you have this desktop and this PC and notice that they both have different addresses and then when it comes to their public address it's exactly the same now this is something known as network translation so you there's a limited number of IP addresses that we have for the entire world so we're not able to just consistently share the exact same address that, that we use inside of our networks in our private networks at home with the whole entire world. So in order to make it so that can work, we have network address translation, which gives us all a public address that gets shared publicly to the world. So your actual gateway will have this address and then it'll give you another address when you get out and then you have a public address. So both of these, since they're in the private network, have it. So basically think about it like this. You have an individual address inside of your private network, but your private network itself has its own public IP address. If you're gonna access the internet, you're gonna do it through that IP address unless you get a VPN, which is why it's a good idea to access the internet through a VPN at all times because you don't want people to be able to figure out what uh, private network you're using. So these two devices will be able to use their pub private IP addresses to communicate with each other. However, any data sent to the internet from either of these devices will be identified by the same public IP address. Public IP addresses are given by your internet service provider at a monthly fee. As more and more devices become connected, it is in becoming increasingly harder to get public access that isn't already in use. For example, Cisco, an industry giant of the world in networking, estimated that there would be approximately 50 billion devices connected to the internet by the end of 2021. Enter IP address versions. So far, we have only discussed one version of internet protocol addressing scheme known as IPv4, which uses a numbering system of 2 to the 32 power IP addresses, which is only 4.29 billion. As you can see why there's such a shortage when we're talking about 50 billion devices total to 4.29 billion. That's not enough addresses. Even with network address translation, that's really going to be an issue soon. So IPv6 is a new iteration of the internet protocol addressing scheme to help tackle this issue. Although it is seemingly more daunting, it boasts a few benefits, more efficient due to new methodologies. The screenshot below compares both an IPv6 and IPv4 address. So right down here, you can see the IPv6 address way longer than the IPv4 address. And this is going to give us significantly more uh, space to work with and free up a lot of space for devices. So a MAC address is basically the thing we were talking about earlier. 
when it was talking about the fingerprints. Now you can't change your fingerprints. Every single device has its own perfectly unique MAC address that shouldn't be shared with any other device. It is possible that every once in a while you'll have a mistake where a company will accidentally make the exact same MAC address, but very rarely you should have that. And this is something that can't be changed and it's always gonna be the exact same thing. Sometimes your IP address, when you go from location to location, will get assigned a different IP address, but your MAC address will always be the same. But this is an interesting thing. It says, however, the interesting thing with MAC address is that they can be faked or spoofed in a process known as spoofing. This spoofing occurs when a network device pretends to identify as using its MAC address. When this occurs, it can often break poorly implemented security designs that assume that devices talking on a network are trustworthy. Take the following scenario. A firewall is configured to allow any communication going to and from the MAC address of the administrator. If a device were to pretend or spoof this MAC address, the firewall would now think that it's receiving communication from the administrator when it isn't. Places such as cafes, coffee shops, and hotels alike often use MAC address control when using their guest or public Wi-Fi. This configuration could offer better services, for example, a faster connection for a price you're willing to pay the fee per device. The interactive lab attached to this task has been made to replicate this scenario. So the interactive labs simulate a hotel Wi-Fi network where you have to pay for the service. You'll note that the router is not allowing Bob's packets blue to the TriHackMe website and is placing them in the bin, but Alice's packets green are going through fine because she has paid for the Wi-Fi. Try changing Bob's MAC address to the same as Alice's to see what happens. So that's talking about this site up here that we can click on. And you'll notice that when you request the website for Bob, he is not allowed to get on because he hasn't paid anything. Now, if we come over here, well, if, I think we're gonna have to keep on doing this a couple times. Yeah, so see, it just doesn't work. And now we can basically copy the MAC address from the other side and after we've copied this MAC address we should be able to also send the traffic so now if we request it we made it there and there's our flag you got on try hack me so that's going to be one of the questions down at the bottom here So we answered the last one, let's answer some of these other ones. So the term IP we mentioned it earlier stands for Internet Protocol. Each section of an IP address is called octet. And in your IPv4 addresses, there are four octets. So how many sections in digits does an IP address have? That's going to be four. So I wasn't sure if that's what it was asking exactly because it's not usually phrased that way, but in, there are four sections in an IPv4 address. That's what it's talking about when it's referring to the octets up here. So the term MAC address stands for media access control. And this is the address that isn't changed and the one that we just spoofed over here. So now we've got our next one, and this is talking about ping. So ping is one of the most fundamental network tools available to us. Ping uses ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol packets, to determine the performance of a connection between devices, for example, if the connection exists or is reliable. The time taken for ICMP packets traveling between devices is measured by ping, such as in the screenshot below. This measuring is done by ICMP's echo packet, then ICMP's echo reply from the target device. Pings can be performed against devices on a network, such as your home network or resources like websites. This tool can easily be used and comes installed on operating systems such as Linux and Windows. The syntax to do a simple ping is ping IP address or website URL. Let's see this action in the screenshot below. So, Right here you have a user pinging the IP address of 192.168.1.254.
and then down below you just have it repeatedly sending these packets and then it's letting you know that it gets responded to the reason that you're going to use ping is because you just want to see if you can figure out whether you're getting response from the device you know sometimes obviously all the devices in the world exist but you don't know whether you're connected to them or not so by using ping you can determine beforehand you're going to try to do any type of penetration testing or trying to connect to that device by pinging and if you are experiencing a network problem for example you're having an issue uh, getting to a specific website in the website name when you type it into Google or Firefox or whatever you're using isn't coming up the good news is is that you can go on and one of the troubleshooting methods that you'll likely do is open up your terminal and type in to ping and ping the IP address directly because sometimes there's an issue where you're not able to make it to the website because the name isn't working which is you'll learn about later the DNS server isn't working but you can go directly with the IP address and you can figure out whether it's a DNS issue or not by trying to access it just through the IP address. So here we are paying a device that has a private address of 192.168.1.254. Ping informs us that we have sent six ICMP packets, all of which were received with an average time of 5.3 seconds. Now you're going to do the same thing to ping an address of 8.8.8 .8 .8 on the deploy website in this task. Pinging the correct address will reveal a flag to answer the question below. So before we get to that flag, let's answer these couple questions first. What protocol does ping use? ICMP, we just read that earlier. And what is the syntax to ping 10.10.10.10? So this is asking what's the command that you would type into your bar in order to complete that. So that's just ping 10.10.10.10. And now we'll look over at the site. So we are here. It looks like we've got, oh, so we don't type it directly on there. We type it here. So ping, oh, this is just asking us directly for the IP address. So. And all you have to do is type the IP address in there. It's sending it and it's connecting to 8.8.8. .8 and if you don't know what 8.8.8 .8 is, that is google.com. That's the server that they use for their search engine. A lot of other things they use. So the flag is THM, I ping the server. And then this very next thing is going to talk about the intro to LAN. So that should be the next video that you see from here. Anyways, I hope that this video is helpful to you. We've completed another room. And now we're going through the pre-security learning path and hearing about all the different things that you need to learn about a network. And you might not think that this is really interesting information. If you're just worried about cybersecurity, you don't care that much about networking. The thing is though, in order to truly understand cybersecurity and work in cybersecurity, you have to understand the foundations of the network because a lot of times the things that you're going to be looking at you are dealing with IP addresses you are dealing with certain forms of connectivity and if you don't fully understand the network and just the basic foundations of IT you're gonna have a really hard time just focusing on cybersecurity you don't have to become an expert in it and know as much as you know the head of administration of IT at your company but you do need to have a very strong foundation in it and understand most of the working parts in it to have a full understanding of cybersecurity. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Be sure to like, subscribe, all the good things that you're supposed to do when a YouTuber finishes a video and they tell you to do. But anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you next time.